In this tutorial, we'll be going over the process of using your CNC in conjunction with your laser to create Vectrix version of a carpentry square. We will start with a set of pre-made vectors and walk through creating toolpaths for the areas that will be engraved or etched with your laser. Then we will develop the tooling that will be used to cut the part out with a traditional CNC cutting tool. To get started, let's open up a file that was installed with your tutorial. We're going to go over here to open an existing file. And we're going to find our vsquare.crv file. Let's open that up. Now in the 2D view, you'll see we'll have all the vectors that we need to cut this square with. We've got there our Vectric logo, which we're going to use our laser to etch in. We have all of the grades here that we're going to use to make sure that we get accurate measurements when we're using our square, and they're going to be etched in as well with our laser. And then we have outlines here so that we can use a traditional CNC tool to actually cut this part out of our material. Let's have a quick look at our job setup. It's a single-sided job. The job size is 8 inches by 8 inches, and the thickness is 0.19 of an inch. Of course, we're using inches as our units. We're going to zero off of our material surface. Our datum is set to the bottom left-hand corner. We can just click OK. If we take a look at our layers, you'll see that we have three different layers set up, and they're all colored differently. So our cutouts are on the green layer, our grades are on the black layer, and our logo is on the blue layer. And this will help us to be able to select the appropriate vectors when we need to create our tooling. And we can also access our layers by using our layers dropdown here as well. Great, now some of the features of our construction square or our V-square are that we're gonna cut out this piece at the bottom here. And this actually fits onto the bottom of our triangle here. And I'll put a picture right here of a rendering so you can see how this is gonna to fit together in the end. We have a little notch here, so you can go ahead and put a nail in your board and you can actually measure your angles properly from all the grades along here. We have accurate inch measurements along this side. And then we have extra dots here that we can use to draw straight lines if you use your foot as a guide. Let's go ahead and have a look at how we're going to develop tooling for this square. So let's go ahead and take a look at our toolpaths tab. We're just going to click there and we'll flip over to our toolpaths. Now you see that we have two new icons here. There is the laser cut and fill and we have the laser pitcher. These two different strategies were installed with your laser module. The second one, laser picture, we're not going to get into any at all in this particular demonstration, but below in our related videos, there will be a link to a tutorial that will go into that deeply. So this first one, laser cut and fill, let's have a look at that. So we'll click on that. And this is our laser cut and fill form. And we're just going to briefly go over this really quickly. And then when we get into actually developing our tooling, we'll get into it a lot more. So first of all, we can choose our tool, or in other words, the settings that we want to use with our laser in the particular material that we're cutting into or that we're trying to etch. We have a quick way of updating the three most used settings right away here, so it makes it easy. The next section is how we'd like to deal with our laser and the vectors that we have selected. So we can choose cut outside, cut inside, cut on, and we can hatch fill areas if we'd like to. Then we have some different settings that we can adjust for each of those. One of the unique things about this particular form is that we can save out our tooling right from within this form. So we can choose a post processor that will work with our CNC machine. And we can also output directly to our machine if we'd like to using vTransfer. And we can save off our tooling if we would like to. We also can calculate and we can close down this form. So for now, let's just close that down. The first bit of tooling that we're going to create is for our laser. And it's going to etch in all of the numbers and the grades that we have here. Now we've put all of those vectors on their own layer. So if I go up to my layers manager here, I can drop that down and I can right click on that layer and I can choose select layer vectors. And when I do that, it will select all the vectors are on that layer. And that's a really powerful thing. That way I'm not going around and having to worry about grouping them or trying to pick them out. So once I have those all selected, I can go ahead now and start to develop my tooling. So let's click on the laser cut and fill. 
So the first thing we need to do is we need to pick the appropriate settings for our laser in the material that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and select uh, those settings from our tool database. And because we're in a laser tool path form, then the only tools that we're going to see are the settings for our laser in different materials. So in our material dropdown, you see we have all kinds of materials here. So if we look at the cardboard corrugated, you'll see that we have some settings for our laser to either cut or mark corrugated cardboard. We can have a look at our craft foam black. And of course, depending on the color of the material we're using, the settings will be different. So there they are there for that. And you can go ahead and set up different settings for each of the materials that you plan on etching or cutting with your laser. So let's go down to plywood because that's what we're going to be using for this particular project. In this case, we have two different sets of settings and then a third that hasn't been defined yet. The first one is for marking. The second one is for if we were going to etch in a picture. Now, each one of these is a different set of settings. So this is the settings for the mark. And then if I click the picture settings, you'll see that these are updated with new settings for that. And we can go back and forth. So the first thing you're going to see is the name that we've given this particular set of settings for our laser. And this has been created by using some of the information that we have down here automatically by our software. If we want to see how that's done, we can just go ahead and click the little notepad here. And you'll see that we have the format and that's set up with some different variables that we can access by right clicking on that field. And you can bring up all the different variables that we can choose to pull in information from. So in this case, we're going to use the tool type, the max power, the curve, and the units. And then also we've added in some of our own custom text. And that's how we can put mark or picture or cut at the end of each one of our settings names. So let's just click cancel here. We have room to put in some notes if we want to. You can choose your tool type, but for right now we just have the one which is laser cutter. We can choose the units that we want to use, millimeters or inches, and of course we can enter in our max power for our laser, and in this case it's a 3.8 watt laser. The next set of settings is our cutting parameters, and the first one we're going to see is kerf. Now, kerf is the width of material that is removed by your laser. This is dependent on the material you are engraving or cutting. For example, the kerf will be different when you're using the same power setting for paper as wood, seeing as paper will burn faster than wood. Also, the kerf will be different depending on the thickness of the material you want to cut all the way through. Many laser manufacturers will have the different kerf numbers for different materials available as a starting point for you but a bit of trial and error should also get you the proper number. The number of passes. You may choose to ask your software to make several passes of your laser to get the desired result. For example, to cut through a material may take more passes than just to etch or burn the surface. Your feeds and speeds. Power. This is the percentage of the full power you'd like to use when you are running this toolpath. This may be different on how dark or deep you want the engraving to be on each pass. Of course, feed units, you can choose whatever's appropriate for your setup. Move speed, this specifies the speed that your machine will move during the cutting or engraving moves. You may need to vary this to reduce burning or melting of your material. The maximum burn rate is used by our software to simulate the burn effect you will see when you preview your tooling. You might consider adjusting this to match the results of your particular laser settings in your material. And then of course you can go ahead and define a tool number if you need to. Of course if you don't want this set of settings anymore you can remove it. If you've made any changes you can apply it and keep them. If you'd like to select this tool you can click select. And if you just want to close down this form, you can do that as well by clicking close. For this toolpath, we want to make sure that we select this set of settings because we want to mark our plywood. So let's just choose select. Now we can, like any other toolpath, you can go ahead and temporarily edit any of the settings or a set of settings for this particular tool or laser setup. And this will only affect this particular toolpath and will not be saved to your settings in your tool database. 
I don't want to change any of those, so we're just going to click Cancel. And we also have three options here that we can change on the fly if we would like to. Power, move speed, and number of passes. Now, of course, we can go ahead and choose how we would like to burn or etch this set of vectors. So we can choose cut outside, cut inside, cut on, or hatch fill. In this case, we are going to cut on those lines. And we choose that. We're not going to be given any other options down here at the bottom to choose from. If we did happen to choose cut outside the line, you'll see that we can add in an allowance offset. So if we were going to make a part that needed to fit inside of another part, then we might want to make an adjustment for that. But for these, we're just going to cut on those lines. And we're going to give it a name, and we're going to call this grades. And now if we wanted to, like I mentioned before, we can choose a post processor from this list. And this list of posts is a subset of the full set of posts that you may have on your machine already. And these are the ones that have the option of using a laser with them currently. So you can choose from there if you'd like to. We can also choose to add a side to the toolpath name. So if this is going to go on the front or the back of our actual project, we can choose to output directly to our laser if we would like to, if it's connected directly to our machine, again, using the transfer. And I can save off the toolpath if I'd like to from here. But for now, we're just going to calculate that and then preview our tooling. And you'll see that we get some etching going on here. Now, the great thing about this sort of a toolpath is if I didn't think that was dark enough, I can just re-preview that toolpath and it will burn darker for me. And you'll see those lines got a bit darker and I can do it again if I'd like to. So let's just reset our preview and close this down and go back into that toolpath again. And we're gonna recalculate that. Now you'll see that the color of our toolpath right now is this light blue. If we go back to our toolpath for a second and we change our power to be 75% and we recalculate that, notice the change in color. And this is great because if you have several different laser toolpaths set up and you're viewing them all at the same time, you can tell visually whether one is set to a higher power or not which is quite handy to be able to see. So let's just close that down again, go back into that toolpath and set that back to 30 again. Recalculate that. We'll preview that visible tooling and then we'll close that down. Now let's just go ahead and create our laser tooling for our Vectric logo. Let's flip over to our 2D view and we're going to select the Vectric Passionate About CNC logo. And you'll see that it's already been grouped together when I, when I click on the V. I don't need to go up into my layer manager and select all the vectors on that layer because they're already grouped for me, which is kind of handy. So let's go back over and create a laser cut and fill toolpath. Now we're going to go ahead and use the same settings for our laser for this toolpath like we did for the etching of the grades. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and use the hatch fill instead. So when we click that, you'll see we have some extra options here. We have step over, which is essentially the distance between the lines that we're going to be creating with our laser. We have the hatch angle, so we can adjust the angle that we want our laser to cut those lines on. And in this case, it's set to 45. I'm going to leave it at 45 because I want it to follow the angle or the line here that we have at the edge of our square. And we're not going to look at the cross hatch option right yet. We're just going to go ahead and name that logo. And we will calculate that. If we zoom in on our preview of that toolpath or the toolpath itself, you'll see you can see those hatch lines right there. And it's light blue because again, it's the color is adjusted based on the power that we've chosen. So let's just go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. And that looks pretty good just like that. But what if we wanted to take a look at the hatch or the full hatch version? So let's just go ahead and reset our preview. Let's close that down, go back to our 2D view again, double click on our logo toolpath, and we're just going to go ahead and click the cross hatch and we'll recalculate that. And if we zoom in, you'll see now we have a cross hatch going on. 
So let's just preview all of our tool paths. That way we'll see our original grades and then also our logo show up. And I think I like it better like that. It's a much fuller, bolder look. So let's close that. Now our next set of tooling is gonna to be using our traditional CNC end mill to cut out our actual two parts that we need. So let's go back to our 2D view again. We're gonna select from this list our cutout, right click on that, and we're gonna select layer vectors. Then we're gonna create a profile toolpath. In this case, we're gonna start at the top of our material. We wanna cut through our material and we're gonna press Z on our keyboard. That way the software will know it's the full depth of our material. And then we are gonna to add to that 0 0.02 of an inch. So it's gonna cut slightly through. We're gonna use a 1 8 inch end mill for this. It's gonna take five passes. We're gonna cut outside of our line. We don't need any allowance in there. We're not gonna do a separate last pass. In this case, I'm not gonna add any tabs in. You might, if you, those are required for me, I'm gonna use double-sided tape to hold this down to my machine. There's no ramps, leads, or anything from this section that we need to worry about. We're just gonna go ahead and rename our toolpath and call it cutout. And then we'll calculate that. It's gonna give us a warning that we're gonna cut through our material and that's okay, I expected that. So we'll click okay. Then we can preview those visible toolpaths. And I can double click on the waste material so I can see the two parts that I'm gonna get in the end. And that looks really great. So let's go ahead and think about how we're gonna save off these toolpaths. Close this. Let's start off by selecting all of our toolpaths, and then we're gonna open up our Save Toolpaths form. Now there's a great video that we're gonna put below in the related videos section that's called the Toolpath Saving Guide, and that will explain all the different options here. But what we'd like our software to do is to save off all the visible toolpaths into multiple files and group where possible. And the expectation is that we're gonna get one toolpath with both of our laser toolpaths in it, and then one with our cutout toolpath in it. We're gonna choose our Gerbil Millimeters G-Code post processor, because I know this one will work with my CNC machine with my laser on it. So we'll save that. And we're gonna give it a name called V-Square. And we'll click Save. Let's have a look and see what gets saved out of our software. We'll just click Save Toolpaths again. And as you see, we'll have two toolpaths saved out. The first one is vSquare underscore one dash two, which is the first and second toolpath. And it's chosen to add in there the name of the first toolpath for me. And the second toolpath is called vSquare underscore three, which is just that single cutout toolpath that uses our end mill. We'll just cancel that. And now we can go ahead and take those toolpaths and run them on our CNC machine. 